In this video, we're going to look at the types of cost in education. The cost studies at the micro level provide a useful link between the input of educational system and the objective. You must be familiar with the types of cost from your knowledge of economics, of education, and costing and budgeting in education. These are the courses you did at the master's level. But however, if you didn't do that, you have to work through it because cost is paramount, is essential in education. So we need to know what to cost, the type of cost that are required in education. Now, let's quickly look at this. The type of cost, the first one is the real cost. The real cost of education. This is the effort and sacrifice required to produce any good or service. It can be described by the price paid by the consumer on goods or service obtained, including the alternative he or she could have used this money for to achieve. This means that the real cost of education includes the alternative opportunity, the alternative for God, the opportunity cost a person has to sacrifice in obtaining education. So we are talking about the real cost. We're looking at both the money used and the alternative you forgot coming to school if you didn't come to school maybe you would have been doing something else so that time you spent coming to school and the work you would have done you have to consider how that will give you the real cost of education that you are paying for education the next one we look at the institutional cost it consists of the capital and current cost the capital cost covers the cost outlay in school fees and durable assets such as building furniture uh, the furniture you have, the uh, generator, and so on. Then the current cost covers the yearly recurrent expenditure. We are talking about the current cost. We are talking about the yearly recurrent expenditure. On the school system, it covers salaries and allowances of workers, stationaries, and whatever thing you need to spend on a daily basis. Now we look at the household cost. This covers the cost borne by members of the household. In educating any of their members, it also includes the uh, any forgone by such members in the school. The cost covers books, uniform, food, and so on. It also covers the institution fees and other charges that are paid by parents. It can also be referred to as private cost. And remember, it is not only parents. In these days, you could even sponsor yourself. So it's either paid by parents or paid by you, the students. Now, let's look at the social cost. The social cost is borne by the society, that is, from the public post as controlled by the government. From the taxes you pay, taxes we are all paying is borne by it. That is, the social cost is simply described the institutional cost minus scholarship and household cost minus tuition cost. Sometimes we will have the social cost might come in through what is given to you in terms of scholarship, in terms of sponsorship. In terms of grants, we may receive social costs in that regard. Now, let's look at what variable and the fixed cost represents here. The fixed cost is a cost which does not change with variation in output because certain factors of production are indivisible. An increase in enrollment may not necessarily alert the building of a, of a faculty. If there's an increase in enrollment, it may not have felt over time, over the years, the lifespan of that faculty could be there while you are still enrolling in every academic session. On the other hand, variable cost is a cost that vary with increase in output. An additional lecturer to the department will vary the cost of salary in the department and equally vary the cost of chairs you need to have in the department, the tables you need to have in the department. So when you're talking about fixed cost and variable cost, remember one does not uh, change as the output changes. The other change when the output is changing. Now let's look at the marginal cost. This is the additional cost that will be incurred when one more unit is added to the total number of students enrolled in a school or class. And like what I just mentioned now, if in a class you have 30 chairs and 30 tables, one student sitting to a table and a chair, and now you have admitted one more student, what do you do? You need an, an additional table and a chair. So if you need additional table and a chair, that additional table and a chair will be your marginal cost because you are bringing in additional. And if you need additional staff 
the same thing will apply you are going to add one more unit to it now we have what we call the unit cost the unit cost can be referred to as the average cost in the arithmetical mean whereby the total cost of education that is monetary cost is divided by the total output or number of units it is important in the cost analysis and cost projection so if for example let's say you have uh, you have spent maybe 200,000 to train maybe uh, 10 students then for you to get the unit cost you spent on that 10 student it will be 10,000 over 10 that will give you the amount you spent on one student